Hi, my name is DJ Spies. One common theme I often see in data model examples is a data model design that forces you to update records. Let's say you have an instrument that collects data for you. It can be online, offline, initializing, collecting, sleeping, waking up, in air. The status is kept in a field on the instrument record. Every time the status changes, you update the record. Easy. Then the instrument goes down. After a week of being in air, someone finally notices. You look at the instrument record and, yep, it's an error. The question is, why? You're not sure, so the next question is, well, what was it doing before the error occurred? If you're writing over your status every time you update it, you can't answer that. You can't even tell when it went down. In this video, we're gonna look at different ways you can track status in your applications. Ultimately, what I'd like to show you is why updating your database is a bad idea in general. There are exceptions, but for most cases, you just want to append data. Finally, we'll look at some of the benefits of storing a state history in your data model, including predicting the future with data mining. So in our first data model example, we have an instrument with a status. It also has an ID, name, manufacturer number, description, and installation location. We just saw that updating the record is a really bad idea. We can't see a history of the statuses, like when it changed, etc. Unlike the ID, name, and description and manufacturer number, the status is something that is likely to change. In fact, I'd argue that the installation location is just like the status. It should be part of the instrument record. Status and locations are things that are likely to change. One data model pattern I've seen for status is to create a status table like this. The status table has the name of the status, the timestamp, maybe the previous state, a reference back to the entity for which this is a record. This is great because you can perform a simple query like where the instrument ID is for the entity you want. You can even narrow your search for like last week or whatever you need. The advantage of this approach is it doesn't affect your instrument table. The concept of a status is in a different table. The downside of this data model example is that when you have many things you need to status and you want to easily add more, you wouldn't want to duplicate the status table for every type, so you'd include a second pointer back to the entity type. This doesn't scale well, and it gets ugly as you get more statusable things to track. Here's another approach. Let's add a status history ID in our instrument table. We'll make the business rule that the status history is created once when the instrument is created. You can enforce this many ways. It's, that's another topic. The advantage of this data model is Whenever we need to add new statusable in its entities, we just include a mandatory key reference back to the status history. How we do statuses never changes, and it doesn't grow as we add more things to status. When we introduced this problem earlier, I also mentioned we wouldn't want a location in our instrument definition. You would break out location in a similar way to how we broke out status. You can even add it two new statuses, installed and uninstalled, to work with your location data. Which data model example is better really depends on how likely you are to add statusable things, and how many. If your list of statusable things is small and unlikely to change, use the single status table. If you're often adding things to your data model, or if you have more than 10 statusable things, I'd use the status history. Both patterns can grow to include allowable statuses, status types, etc. Anything to make your data mining easier. What we're doing is breaking up definitional data versus operational data. Things that define our instrument go in the instrument table. Things that define its operational state should be tracked in a state table. Every record in your operational table should define a single fact. In the example earlier, we're defining the state of the instrument for a single date time. Repeats on the data will not change the current status of our instrument. The most recent status is the status of the instrument. Of course, we could do all of this without keeping the history of the status. We're really just normalizing the data. Why would we want to keep the history? To predict the future. And any future questions you don't know, you need to answer. Whenever you update data, you're really deleting data and then doing a new insert. When you delete data, you lose information, including information you didn't know you needed. If someone comes to you in the future and says, hey, the 90210 instrument seems a bit sketchy. How often are they going into an error state? You can't answer the question unless you're keeping the history of statuses. 
If you only append new data and never update or delete, this allows you to answer questions you didn't know you needed to. You could tell your boss, the 90210 instruments seem to fail more than the 80205s. In fact, you could even make a future prediction when 50% will have failed and need to be replaced. That helps you predict required budgets, time needed, and so on. It's one of the big ideas behind big data. When I work on database modeling, if I come across a point where I need an update, that's a red flag for me. This doesn't mean the updates are completely evil, it just means that I need to think about the problem a bit more. Data should not be deleted until triggered by your data retention policy. Keep everything until you're certain you don't need it. Even then, it's a part of the data deletion process, not your day-to-day -day business as usual activities when you do delete data. Hopefully this has given you a few ideas on how to track status in your data. Make sure to subscribe so we can keep up to date with the new videos. See you in the next video. When I work on database modeling, if I come across a point where I need an update, that's a red flag for me. This doesn't mean updates are completely evil. It just means that I need to think about the problem a bit more. Data should not be deleted until triggered by your data retention policy. Keep everything until you're certain you don't need it. Even then, it's part of a data deletion process, not your day-to-day -day business as usual activities when you do delete data. Hopefully this has given you a few ideas on how to track status in your data. Make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with the new videos. And I'll see you in the next video.